Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, what just happened is stupendous, wasn't it? I don't know about you all, but I seriously wanted to jump up and say and really hug, hug Devashi for what he just did. I won't be like presenting a talk and be so terrible. Two of the world's worst industrial disasters are ongoing in the city that I come from as I speak. The disaster has killed over 25,000 people and downed it. Over half a million people carry lifelong injuries. And the next generation, hundreds and hundreds of them, carry the mark of the poisons of Indian carbide and Dow Chemical Company today. This is a city in which every citizen has lost either a family member or a friend or a neighbor to the disaster, where every fifth citizen is battling with a chronic illness caused because of the toxic exposure to the before. And as they and the next generation they said. And yet, and because of, and despite of all this, a, a sizable section of this of this citizen citizenry, most of the women, all of them poor, are still continuing with the battle for justice and a life of dignity. So given this, and as you can imagine, there are more than a thousand and one stories in Sher Bhopal. And I in the next 50 minutes, 60 minutes or so, I'll tell four of these stories. And the first one is on uh, how I got to Bhopal, or how Bhopal got to me. Because as I just said, I was in, in doing my PhD in Metrological Engineering, um, and I was in this village, this is in a rural NGO, which is 150 kilometers away from Bhopal. I heard on the radio that there was some gas that had leaked from some factory by some corporation and in which some hundred people had died. So I thought, let me go there and see what I can do because I'm not very away from, far away from Bhopal. So I took the train and went there. The station was deserted, but once I came out, there were thousands and thousands of people in just utter misery and pain and their sore eyes and tears streaming down there. And just this complete helplessness, not even doing, groaning. And I was numb, I was not prepared for it. But what moved me to action was just seeing this delightful sight of hundreds and hundreds of uh, volunteers, young and old, from different social organizations, religious organizations, just doing whatever they could do. And they couldn't do very little, but they're doing it. They didn't know what medicines would work, but they're still putting eye drops and giving antacids. And, but most of what people were doing was carrying people off so that they could get medical treatment. So that's what I started doing. And I found that no way to refuse. There was always place for another ill, death, desperately ill person to be taken to the hospital. It was amazing. And then, and the evening sky was lit with the mass fuel fires that were burning. And then kept, the nights kept like that, lit by the mass fires. I met a man who had pistols in his hands. He said, I, I came down when I saw this happening, and I, all I did was I picked up a spade and I started digging this mass grave. Three days and three nights, and I had dug graves. And in this confusion, there was so much uncertainty. Was, it, was the air safe to breathe? Was the water safe to drink? Was the vegetables safe? And why were the officials getting vegetables from outside? And then there was a talk of this German doctor who had come with 10,000 ampules of this drug called sodium hazardate. And then, in the middle of this, we hear that the company chairman, Warren Anderson, had been to town and had actually been arrested. And before we go to see the man, he's already bailed out and left and escorted out in a safe plane. It was time of extreme confusion and panic. Was it safe? Were the babies growing inside? Mothers doing safe? Should they have a termination of pregnancy? What? Now, nobody was there because there was no government. And, and meanwhile, there were these Mandarin private lawyers led by Melvin Belai in, in a dark suit with a red silk lining and elevator skin boots, who said fifteen million dollars minimum of bread for every uh, victim. And he, what he didn't mention was that most of these private lawyers were getting people to sign on, and most of them come putting their thumbprints. And you could hardly see the salon brief that which gave away forty percent or more of the compensation to the Mandarin lawyers. 
and this is going on. And then the government said it went along with Indian Carbides plans for the MIC that have not gone out of the tank because the pressure fell down. There was 20 tons of MIC and Indian Carbides said, why waste it? Let's make pesticide of it and make business. And the government went along. They refused to listen to us who said, put caustic sodas, neutralize the damn thing. But the government listened to it. And because of Operation Faith, and people didn't have faith, 400,000 people in Bhopal, just poisoned, had to flee the city. It was a mass exodus, you can't imagine that. But all of this, and all of this, and people were very clear, there was a simmering rage, you see, despite all the sickness. And by the end of the first month, they gathered together, and they went, and they made a seat around the chief minister's house for seven days. And it was an amazing, amazing sight. Because there was no money, people had no money. The women would go back and bring food that would be shared among four families, five families, and all nine and they would tell their stories, sang their songs. And, and uh, the spirit of sharing and caring and the spirit of resolve that we will continue with this, till this justice, till it's ensure that Bhopal doesn't have offer anywhere else, we won't move. That is what when I decided, when I went to Bhopal, I thought I would stay for seven days max. But that's the time when I realized I'll be here with these people. It's amazing to be here and it's extremely privileged to be here. And I've never regret that decision in the last more than 26 years now. I find it very good time. So instead of four, I was like three stories. So that was a long time back. But in the middle of the second story, I'm going to just put it very shortly on the sodium sulfate that the German doctor had brought. Turned out it was working. But there was this confusion because the mid-carbide was withholding all the medical information the effect of the, of the gas. So the, so the government of India sent a telex based on the findings of this German doctor and that was And the said, yeah, go ahead, use it. And three years later, the Indian said, don't use it. And as if on cue, the Director General of Health Services, Dr. Nam, who's elder brother was security chief of Karabai. And one of the top consultants in the city was the Indian Karabai's medical advisor, said, if doctors want to do it, they should they are doing it at their own risk. Nobody knew what could be done. And so the doctors essentially that effective stoppage on the administration of hazard. Meanwhile, medical research was going on. A double diet clinical trial was going on. It was showing that Hazardic was indeed effective. So we got that. We had to get for the Supreme Court to get Hazardic. And we started giving injections to these people. We treated more than 1,300 people. And we found that it was very effective. We had no instruments. We developed simple ways to measure whether it was making them breathe easier, eat better, or work on feed less fatigue, and it was. And yet, on the 22nd day of the clinic ride, our clinic was raided in the middle of the night. We put in jail for 18 days, and then all our records of more than 1200 people were confiscated, never returned. And last year, the Indian Council of Medical Research published a report that says that the results of the double plant clinical trial show that have sodium has sulfate was indeed effective in detoxifying the body because there were higher excretion of urinary thiocyanate among the people who had been given that in their veins. So why was it stopped? Because it was stopped for legal reasons. It was stopped for medical legal reasons. Because what sodium has sulfate was showing that the, the poison had not just caused global damage to the lung and the uh, uh, contact damage to the lung and the eyes, but actually this damaged the entire system because the poison has crossed the lung barrier, gone into the blood, and damaged and not all the systems in the body. And that's what we saw. And that is what Indian carbide didn't want to acknowledge. And that's why Sodium Hazard it was stopped. My third story is about the other disaster. And this is I most often I go to galleries like this and I find that people know about the Gopal disaster. They remember it's something that happened long back, but where did it give money and what did you know Things like that. But very few of mine have know about the other disaster, which actually predates the gas disaster. And this is a disaster caused by the reckless dumping of hazardous waste. 
We got these documents, internal corporate documents that show A, that Indian Carbide Corporation USA had actually designed the waste disposal system. B, that Indian Carbide knew that the waste forms were leaking way back in 82 through telexes from the Bhopal plant. And C, that in 1989, Indian Carbide scientists had actually tested the samples and found that despite dilution over several times, five to ten times, Yet there was 100% fish mortality when fish were left in the tank. All this was suppressed. We didn't know. So in 1990, we sent samples of this water and soil, and we, we got them, and we, no, no government lab would, would test these samples because it was too political. So we had to get them sent to Citizens Environmental Laboratory in Boston, and they found that there were thalates and polynatal hydrocarbons like dichlorobenzene, trichlorobenzene. And all of these have been found that cause cancer, that cause birth defects, that cause damage the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, and the brain, all of this. All of this we see now today. And children have been born with horrible birth defects. But the upshot of, of the story is that the scientific organizations in the government, is very good, is there is documentary evidence to show that, have essentially demonstrated a complete and appalling lack of technical competence and scientific integrity. So much so that now the National Environmental Engineering Research Institute has been told your studies are no good, they are not reliable. And that, that poison, which is known to have spread to at least 3 kilometers from the factory, at least 300 feet down, you know, with all these horrific chemicals with high concentrations. I mean, being is found, mercury was 6 million times in one, one place, 6 million times more than what the WHO recommends as the background level. This is a global toxic hotspot and dark chemical that should be paying for the cleanup, that should be compensating people for the birth defects and all these cancers and other damages, still continues to deny liability, saying it's human carbides liability, not ours. We just bought the assets, we didn't buy the liability. But and the last story is about Zimbabwe, which is one of the things that's happening, that is, which is why things are not all that depressing and gloomy, and many of the things that Devish was talking about act in fact came up in, in, in building Zimbabwe, which is we fought for the, the people fought for health care there, because that was the greatest need. And and they got the government to pay huge amounts of money. I mean, there's so many hospitals that Bhopal had more hospitals per thousand population than US and Europe. And yet there were, there were million dollars worth, billions of dollars worth of machines there, diagnostic machines. And what people were not getting was proper treatment. Because there were no treatment protocols. Because the Indian government was withholding information, and because the best scientific agencies in their country and the government were not exactly killing themselves trying to find what should do good to the people. So what was happening was, there was indiscriminate prescription and, and lots of medications. You ask some Bhopali how many medicines have been taken. The answers won't, won't be in numbers, it will be in kilograms. 30 kilograms, 20 kilograms, you know. So that is when we did a study and we found that the chemical disaster was in fact a, a, like a windfall for pharmaceutical companies. <coughs> We found that the Bhopal drug market had been taken over by a dozen pharmaceutical companies. One of them, Ron Bolen, actually owned the Indian Carbide MIC pesticide plant in Institute West Virginia at the time that it was selling its drugs in such large quantities in Bhopal, like a capital population. And, I think, and we figured that this is happening all over the world, that because there are these rising environmental health diseases, diabetes, multiple chemical sensitivity, uh, endometriosis, you can name it. And this is because there are companies that are poisoning us and the com same companies selling us the drugs for the poison and there has to be a way to get out of the circle of the poison. And that's when we created Subhavna. And here we integrate different systems of medicine, modern medicine, but along with Ayurveda and Panchakarma and Yoga. And we found that through a judicious and scientific uh, combination of integration of all of this, it is possible to develop safe, simple, inexpensive, and effective therapies for chemical induced um, diseases, chronic diseases. And which is relevant to the whole world, because we're getting wherever we may be, 
may not be in Bhopal, but it is slow and silent, Bhopal is going all around. And there's not always some environmental change possibility does. It does we do many research on and here we publish uh, in journals like the Journal of American Medical Association and American Journal of Industrial Medicine that show that the next gen the impact on the, on the next generation, gen the children born after the conceived and born after the disaster. And, and this was not done because medical research was abandoned by, by the government. And at the same time, what we have done is that hasn't been done before, and that could as well be a model for all this creative combination. And this again, I, I would like you to still ruminate on what the machines have talked about, is how this creative possibility of getting people in the community to come together and to make conscious and effective in, uh, impacts to improve. So what we have we just spent the thumb rule that for every 1,000 people you will find at least 5 to 10 people more and, and at least so far we found mostly women who would like in fact of the goodness of the heart and because of the, the spirit of the community they are in would work towards healthcare. So they do malaria control, they do TB control and they are right down growing herbal gardens that treat most of the common ailments and we believe planting every shatavari or medicinal plant is in fact a, a statement against Pfizer and has needs to be done. In fact, I always do and grow medicinal plant. So this is what, what, what Sambhata is, is doing and along with this they also campaign on the legal liability of the corporations because there, there are people who say that it's better to um, light a lamp than to curse the darkness. But we think that the, this, this, uh, this uh, toxic empire is spreading so widely and so fast. I mean, each of us are bringing in between 300 to 600,000 chemicals. Uh, sorry, 30,000 to 60,000 chemicals. At the most, about more than 100,000 chemicals. And all these are showing up. There are studies in all over the world that show that cancer rates, that birth defects, that defects that essentially caused by endocrine disrupting chemicals, thousands of them are there in our everyday life, in our in the cosmetics we use, in the soaps, in the anything. And all these poisons are showing in all the body body studies that have been doing. And the world is becoming and this is where we feel that the work of Sambhava and the work of the Gopal survival becomes relevant. Is because when the world becomes more and more like Gopal, then there's a lot that the world can learn from the Gopalis. And we have to be Gopalis wherever we may be. Thank you.